Today we are going to discuss about how to practice daily activities in a retreat setting. First of all, in retreat, okay, we meditate the whole day. The whole day constitutes as you get up at 4.30 in the morning. And then you meditate till 10 o'clock at night. So 4.30 to 10 o'clock at night is the, your waking moment. And in retreat, one must be always in the mindful mode during this waking moment. And in here, we do sitting meditation and walking meditation one hour alternatively throughout the day. But at the same time, there are periods which we don't do walking meditation or sitting meditation. As an example, you get up at 4.30 in the morning. Okay. Again, try your best you can, the best that you can. You might hit some, you might miss some. But with time, you will hit more and more you will catch more and more. So 4.30, you woke up. If you can, as soon as you wake up, know that you are awake. Okay. Waking up is a one process happening on its own, which means bodies become active, starting to do things with the mind. And the mind has become consciously aware, and that is waking up. Consciously aware of the environment or the existence. That is the simple, normal way. And when you are mindful, you know that you are awake. Before, you are simply awake and you are aware. Now, you know that you're awake. Starts from there. And then, next thing is, if you can, you want to open your eyes. Okay. Intention to, intention to open your eyes. And then you open very slowly. Okay. Everything during the retreat is everything you must do extremely slowly. Our teachers said one must behave like as if you are a person with a serious back injury. You can imagine how a person with a serious back injury would move very slowly, gingerly, and carefully. And that's how one should be conducting oneself. So when you open your eyes, before you open, know that you open, and you know exactly how it opens. You'll be surprised. You see that one eye open, one eye open before the other. They don't open at the same time. Those little things, opening the eyes, wanting to get up, getting up. And when you are getting up, leaning, pushing to get up, pushing, pushing, getting up, getting up. To make the long story short, making the bed, okay, taking your towels. And wherever you can, okay, try and observe your intention. And then after that, going to the washroom. It's all need to be done. Brushing your teeth. Know that you're brushing your teeth. Brushing, brushing, moving, moving. Cleaning everything, whatever you are doing. 
washing the face, drying the face. And if you are going to do number one, number two, doing number one, doing number two, breathe in. Always at the moment, there's a pain, there's a movement. All things must be observed. But at the same time, when you are using this washroom, of course we say you must be as slow as you can. But at the same time, you have to be careful of your environment. The environment is, you are not the only one. There are many other yogis and there is a limited number of washrooms. Because of that, you cannot slow as much as you want to. You must be relatively moving fast. Relatively moving fast, and when you are fast, of course you cannot observe in details, but observe whatever you can. So those kind of things where there's an urgency for others for the same facility, you move a lot faster than the normal. You come out, and from there, walking back to your bedroom, and every step is being awareness. And then changing clothes and going to the meditation hall. Okay. You have to be meditation hall a few minutes before five o'clock. You go there and then you stand in front of the seat where you are meditating. You know that you're standing and then wanting to sit down, know the intention, and then sitting down, every movement, every leaning, every bending, how adjusting position and sitting down, and so on. So after that, you do one hour of walking meditation. And then at six o'clock, okay, the bells ring, and that is for breakfast time. Before you get up, know that you want to get up. Intention to get up and getting up. When you get up, everything is slowly leaning, pushing, pressure, up, down, and so on. Getting up, and when you get up, turning, be aware. Everything is, when there is a no competition for space and facility, has to be as slow as you can. And then, Walking, lifting, pushing, dropping, lifting, pushing, dropping. When you come near the door, okay, you stop standing. The door is closed, so you have to open. Okay, intent, intention to open. And the hands move up, moving up. The hand is bending, bending. The hand is stretching, stretching, stretching. The hand touches the doorknob. Touching, touching, the door not made of metal, there's a coolness, you know that coolness. Turning, turning, pulling, pulling, bending, bending. In other words, most of the activities during the day, other than the sitting and the walking, there is a lot of bending and stretching process. Bending your hand, stretching your hand. Bending your body, stretching your body. Bending, stretching, bending, stretching. That process, that activity is the most common okay, item among the daily activities. So daily activities include everything other than formal sitting meditation and formal walking meditation. Other than that, that is all daily activities. Opening the door, and then you go where the food is, okay, in a table, buffet table. You go there, stand, or oh, looking, looking, then picking up. Have to be everything, be aware. Picking up the plates, or making a toast, or putting the butter, or peanut butter, or dispensing all the food onto the plate. And if you are choosing, 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 deciding, deciding, Every activity of the food dispensation from the 
table into your plates, you do with full mindfulness. And then you walk to your table, placing the plates, and then your sitting down process, pulling the chair, turning your body, sitting down. Everything is deliberately slowly. The slower you move, the more details you can observe. The more details you can observe, and if you can be with the more details, the stronger your concentration becomes. Knowing each moment, each moment, each moment is mindfulness, sati. And if you can continuously know these moment to moment, all activities continuously, that is where your concentration power increase. The unbroken change of mindfulness build up your concentration power. And that concentration is, in our meditation, we call it momentary concentration. Moment to moment, you are building up the concentration, but as the mindfulness is continuous, your concentration become continuous, and that power of concentration can be as strong and powerful as the samatha meditation, the other type of meditation. So you're sitting down, and then the same thing, okay? Placing, stretching your hand, lifting your hand, picking up your fork, knife, lifting, putting, cutting, piercing, lifting, lifting, lifting. When it comes near your mouth, then opening, placing, and then chewing, chewing, chewing. When you say chewing, you're observing the movement of the, your jaws. Sometimes you are aware of the movement, and sometimes you're aware of the taste. When you're taste, tasting, tasting, sour, sour, sweet, sweet, hot, hot, creamy, creamy, whatever the taste is. And then suddenly you might be aware the change in the nature of the food, the form of the food, before it is solid and then it becomes mushy and then later it becomes liquidy. And then when it becomes too liquid, automatically you don't want to keep it in your mouth anymore. So what happened? You want to swallow intention and then swallowing, swallowing, swallowing. And that process, whatever is precisely at the moment you observe, whether it's lifting or bending or stretching or chewing or tasting, and at the same time, you only look just in front of you, just your plate, you don't look around. Simply totally in what you are doing, what your present current job or objective is. Other than that, you don't have any concern. You don't look how the other person is eating, or you don't look and judge. As soon as you look, you judge, because you see something is doing wrong. Huh? He's not doing this right. He's not doing that right. Automatically, judging comes in. If you happen to see it, just say, seeing, seeing. Don't go into judging, judging. Simply seeing your eyes happen to be there and there's a, that person or this person sitting there and you see it and seeing, seeing, that means you don't go into the moment of judgment so there's nothing there back to eat and so on. And now you can see it when you finish getting up, placing the dishes, washing it and so on and so forth. That is while you're eating, you can observe that way in details. Everything is in a very slow mode, and everything you can observe must be observed. If you hear some sound, hearing, hearing. If you hear the birds chipping, okay, some people say, oh, nice, this is beautiful, this is peaceful. As soon as you go nice, beautiful, and peaceful, you are out of your meditation, you're out of mindfulness. 
you drifted into the world of pleasant pleasure or unpleasant. When the birds chirp, oh, it's nice. When the neighbor's dog just bark, gosh, the damn dog it broke my concentration. See, as soon as it doesn't go with what you would like to happen, what you would like to see, the anger arises, disagreeable, aversion, anger, irritation, frustration. As long as there's something that you like is happening, oh, it's beautiful, sweet, pleasant, peaceful, nice. See, everything is the operation of this law bar, craving or desire, craving or greed, attachment, or the anger or aversion or dissatisfaction. Those two powers are always in play. You will see that in the handout today, one of the three handouts. So, if you hear, is hearing, hearing. Don't go good or bad. Like it or don't like it. And when you go out and doing walking meditation, sometimes you see, even though you were supposed to see only six or eight feet in front of you, same time, the eyes still roam around. Because the old habit is there. So when you see something, don't go into the judgment mode. Don't go into the favoritism or prejudice, likes or dislike, anger or love, nothing. Simply seeing, seeing, hearing, hearing. When you are eating, tasting, tasting. Oh, I like it very much. Oh, I hate this dish. As soon as I like it very much and I hate this dish, you are out of your mindfulness mode. If you know exactly that is eating, chewing, tasting, sweet, nice, sour, hot, you're still purely on the fact basis that you are sensing, then you are purely in the total mindfulness mode. As soon as you go into the emotional state, likes and dislike, aversion and love, then you are out of your mindfulness. That is how, but at the same time, you can't help. You will still see the anger, you become angry. Okay. If you become angry, that is only when you come to know. Don't blame yourself at that moment. Just know anger, anger, anger. This is anger. The moment you become aware of it, without discrimination whether you are doing right or you are doing wrong, simply observe and know as it is. Oh, this is the wrong thing, I'm out. Then you are even more out because of that thought. As soon as you become aware that you are not on the right track, simply observe it and put it back on the right track. By simply by knowing and observing that you are doing wrong, you automatically go back to the right track. So, in there, there is the whether you eat breakfast or whether you are eating lunch. And lunch has to be finished by 12 o'clock. After 12, we don't eat any substantial food. You can drink water, juice, herbal tea. That is from there on. And till the next morning at 6 o'clock, we don't eat anything, but only we lick on a fluid. And then 6 o'clock lunch, or 6 o'clock breakfast, 11 o'clock lunch, too. And you have your choice. If you like to eat fish and chicken, fine. If you don't like it, there's also vegetarian, that is fine. And if you don't even eat, you are a pure vegan, and there's a, you request for it, there will be vegan food according to your food choice habit, these are provided. While you eat, you do. While you're using 
washroom, you do while you're doing shower, the same thing. And the showering process, I think we have a time slot for each person. So you know exactly you have 15 minutes, nobody in rush. In 15 minutes, you do as slow or as fast as you can do for your cleaning up. In the shower, you observe your shower mode. And at night, you go back to your bed, knowing that you know go back, and then preparing the bed, lying down in bed, and lying down, know that you are lying down. And then, don't just think, put your hands on your tummy, and then observe that rising and falling movement. But before you sleep, you don't observe quite deeply. You just be general awareness. Because if you go very deeply, you won't fall asleep. You're applying a lot of energy to know that movement in details. So you put general awareness on the movement and you fall asleep with mindfulness. You wake up with mindfulness. You do sitting meditation with mindfulness. You do walking meditation with mindfulness. You eat with mindfulness. You bathe with mindfulness. You do your number one and number two with mindfulness. Every waking movement, you live in the state of being mindful of whatever is happening to your mind or to your body at the present moment. So that is a retreat mode and how you live or how you live mindfully in your daily activities. So that is the application of daily activities or general awareness of a waking moment other than formal sitting and formal walking. And the same, this kind of observation, everything we just said can be applied to your daily life in your normal life. The only that you need to do is you'll be always observing in the general awareness mode. You can't do the details. But the key thing is being general awareness. And whenever you can, you try to apply that. And the benefit is, whenever you are mindful of what you are doing at the present moment, what you are thinking at the present moment, it stops the momentum of your so-called greed, anger, and uncertainty, and illusion. These are cannot pick up momentum. You stop that momentum, you stop that momentum. So, in other words, you are always on a guard. Guard for what? Guard not to do wrong things or incorrect things or things that are hurtful or harmful. You are guard always to be ready to do correct things or helpful, constructive and productive things. Mindfulness automatically streamline you what to avoid and what to do for the maximum efficiency with beneficiality. You don't have to, I will do this or I will do that. You don't have to put it that way. You simply be mindful. And that mindfulness will automatically change your channel. And all your acts will be, actions will be wholesome, beneficial, suitable, and appropriate. But when you don't have mindfulness, those things may be and may be not. Sometime you hit, sometime you miss. That's it. So that is the advantage of living with mindfulness. So two modes. One mode is general awareness. General awareness will always streamline you to do the helpful, generous, constructive, productive things, and avoid hurtful, harmful, and 
not beneficial things, general awareness, general mindfulness. And if you have the detailed, deep and penetrative mindfulness, which is more in meditation mode and retreat mode, they will allow you to unfold the true nature of the mind and matter, the true nature of all physical phenomena and all ph mental phenomena. Okay. Only with deep penetrative mindfulness you can unfold that because deep penetrative mindfulness will give you the concentration power. Only with the concentration power you can see the true nature of mind and the true nature of matter. And when you truly understand the true nature of mind and matter, what happens is your attitude, your perception of the world changes with that. How does it change? You become less possessive. You become less greedy. You become more generous, more giving, more sharing. You are always wanting to for the service of others and the publics. Your self-interest become less and less and less. And these things happen not with the sheer willpower. It's simply understanding the true nature of mind and matter. Your perception changes by itself and you become the benefactor of the society. So that is the purpose of Buddhist mindfulness insight meditation, totally changing the perspective and perception of life for the benefit and wholesomeness to the society and to the human race. So with that, we'll conclude May all of you be able to practice mindfulness insight meditation precisely, correctly, and may you be able to unfold the true nature of mind and matter as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.